So in this chapter, we're going to be looking at two states of particles, static and dynamic. Static simply means that the particle is not moving, and dynamic means that it is moving. We'll start off looking at some inclined plane questions. These should be very familiar to you, very much the same as we've seen earlier in the course, except we're going to add in a lot more variety. We'll add in some extra forces and extra considerations. So I'm going to start by producing my own diagram and copying down the forces given. So 5 newtons as the weight. I've got the diagonal P. I've got 8 newtons going down the slope. And I've got 2 newtons perpendicular to the slope. So we'll go ahead and do the things we usually do, which is to make sure we have components perpendicular and parallel to the slope. So these two forces, the weight and P, we're going to break them into their components, filling in the angles as we usually would. Let's make sure we label the components. So P sine alpha, P cosine alpha, 5 cosine 30, and 5 sine 30. Okay, diagram is fully labeled. We're ready to do our resolving. So we'll start by resolving parallel to the plane. So let's just make sure we collect all of the forces. The positive direction will be up the slope. So let's just get these directions on. Uh, so these are the three forces we need to work with. P cosine alpha in the positive direction equals five sine 30 plus eight. All right, let's not forget that this is in equilibrium. So these two must equal each other. Up the slope equals down the slope. Similarly, perpendicularly up equals perpendicularly down. And we once again have three forces to work with. From these two expressions, I'm trying to find an unknown alpha. I realize I have sine and cosine. It will be useful if I can turn the two of those into tan. Then I could solve for alpha. So tan alpha is going to be p sine alpha over p cosine alpha. The p's will cancel out. And I'm just going to write in the fraction. In the calculator, this works out to be 0 0.222 to three decimal places. All right, so from here, we can find alpha. It's a quick inverse tan. As soon as we know alpha, we can actually substitute back and find the value for P. Alpha is 12.5. Substitute it into one of the earlier equations. I'll actually substitute it into the one that I've labeled 2. We get P sine of 12.5 equals 5 cosine 30 subtract 2. A little bit of division and we get a value for P. From here we get that P equals 10.8. So that's 10.8 Newtons for that unknown force. So a couple of considerations here. Once again, you're hearing from me that I insist you draw your own diagram every single question. It's a necessary exam skill that I need you to practice. You're going to make components for every force that is not parallel or perpendicular. You're going to make sure these components are labeled and you've got direction arrows on them. And from there, you're going to then be able to resolve in the perpendicular direction and the below direction and just follow through your maths, doing smart things, and you will be able to get to the correct solution.